Let's do something a little different today and put a grayscale shader on our character so we can see what he would look like maybe in a newspaper. What's up everybody, welcome to my pixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. So today we're going to put a grayscale shader on our ninja over here. For those of you who don't know what a shader is, it's basically a way to adjust the look of an image that's drawn to the screen, usually with some fancy math. Now, I'm guessing that explanation probably doesn't do much for you, so how about this? Let's say that you have a sprite animation. Maybe a certain character has 10 different animations with 10 frames per animation. This would mean that you need to draw 100 different images for that character. Then let's say that you wanted a different color for that character. Maybe say you wanted a grayscale color like we're doing today. If you aren't using a shader, you would have to take the 100 images for the character, convert those to grayscale, and then also store those images in your game. Now you have 200 images. And don't forget that you're going to have to still build all new animations that make use of those grayscale images. Say you want 10 different character colors, now you need 1000 different images and 100 different animations, even though absolutely nothing has changed except for the character color. As you can see, this doesn't scale well. Here's where shaders come into the rescue. Using a shader, I can automatically adjust the color of all my character animations so I don't need to redraw all of those sprites, rebuild any of those animations, and this also will help to reduce the file size of the game as I have fewer sprites to store. But enough talk, let's get into it. So as you can see here, we're in the hero scene. Again, standard platformer that I've been using in the past how many uh, tutorials, but standard hero over here. And then what we're going to have to do is we're going to add a shader to the animated sprite. And the animated sprite is what holds all the different pictures, so we're going to need to adjust the colors and things of that sort on those sprites. So we're going to click on the animated sprite over here. And then we go over here to the side. Under canvas item, you see material. We're going to select new shader material. Now you see you have down here where it says shader. We're going to do a new shader. And then if the error for the shader code doesn't pop up here automatically, you'll just click on that new shader. And then you'll have this code editing window for the shader code. Now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and type all this out and then I will explain this afterwards. So here we are. We're going to say shader type canvas item. Render mode unshaded. We're going to use the fragment function or fragment processor. I think they might call it fragment. Notice here we're using curly curly braces or curly brackets. Uh, this shader code doesn't use GDScript. It's uh, close to the GLSL shader code that uh, you might have heard of or seen elsewhere. If you didn't, then uh, yeah, feel free to look it up. The Godot implementation is just a little bit different, but it's uh, fairly similar. Okay, and in here we're going to use Say color equals texture texture comma UV float lumi color dot R plus color dot G plus Color dot B divided by three point zero semicolon color dot RGB equals vec three lumi semicolon. With that in place, we can already see the effects of our shader code on our character. 
Let me try to explain briefly what the shader code is doing. So up here at the top line, we have a shader type of canvas item. The, can the type of canvas item is for 2D rendering. We have a render mode of unshaded. The unshaded just tells it not to consider any lighting effects. Then we have the fragment processor. The fragment processor is a built-in where the code contained inside of here will run on every single pixel drawn to the screen or every single picture or every single pixel that uh, this shader code is handling. Down lower here we have color equals texture, texture UV. So color is a built-in vector for value containing RGBA values. That's a red, green, blue, and alpha. Then over here we have the texture, texture UV, excuse me. So this texture is a built-in function and what it goes ahead and does is, is it's going to read the texture that it's attached to pixel by pixel. So right now we have it attached to the animated sprite, right? So any and all sprites that run through the animated sprite are going to be read pixel by pixel. Then we have this float here. Float Lumi. I just called it Lumi here for luminance or luminosity. Uh, as you can see, uh, this didn't highlight red or anything. It's not a built-in. It's uh, something that I define myself. So you can call it whatever you want. Then over here we have color R plus color G plus color B divided by 3.0. So what this is doing is it's taking the RGB values of the texture, averaging them, and then assigning the value uh, assigning the resulting value to this Lumi, val Lumi variable that we created over here. Finally down here we have color RGB equals vector Lumi so all this does is it applies a value in the Lumi variable to the RGB channels of the texture which gives you a gray color as a uh, varying brightnesses. The method that we use up here this averaging method for calculating the grayscale values works but it might not be the most accurate. This is because given a pure red, green, and blue color at max saturation, our eyes will perceive the green color to be the brightest, the red will follow, and the blue will be last. This being the case, what we should be doing is be given a higher weight to the green values than we do to the red and blue ones. There are numerous ways to calculate these values, but I'm going to go ahead and give you one that's fairly well accepted from what I can tell. My from what my research tells me. So what we can do here is we'll just comment this out. For those of you who don't know, I just use the control K. That's the keyboard shortcut to comment something out. Then I'm just going to go ahead and make a new line here. We're going to use the same variable, but we're just going to use a different method to calculate this. So let me just type it all in here color dot r times zero point twenty one twenty six plus color dot g times zero point seven one five two plus color dot b times zero point zero seven two two if we hit the semicolon, that's going to do it. I don't know if you saw right there, the color changed just slightly. Let's go ahead and, uh, okay, let's comment this one out, the new one. Then we'll go back to the old averaging method. You'll see the color change. Okay, then we'll comment out the old, the averaging method go, and uncomment the new method. So that goes into effect. You'll see the color change. All right. As you might be able to tell, this will give the green values about 72% of the weight, the red 21%, and the blue 7% when deciding on the brightness of the uh, gray color that is being given. The difference between these two methods of calculating the luminance may vary more or less depending on the colors of your sprites though. In any case, now that we have that done, let's go ahead and run our game and see what we've accomplished. All right, let's just jump around a little bit, test out some of our animations. As you can see, everything is looking good. It's working just like uh, you would expect it to. And 
Well, the only thing is, now he's in grayscale. Cool, there we go. So without modifying any of our animations or drawing any more sprites, we've managed to change the color of our character in all of his animations. If you liked today's video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on what's coming up next. Also, the sprites, source code, and everything else that I've used in this tutorial today will be available for download on my Patreon page, so if you want to check that out and also support the channel, the link will be in the description. Thanks again to everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.